You know why, right? You know why. I know why. And most importantly, they know why. It says here, the top streamed shows are almost all old. Why? Hmm. Let me think. Because they weren't woke. That's why. All right. Next star, the most streamed show last year wasn't the latest Netflix realist reality TV show craze, nor was it the highly anticipated final season of Succession or the debut of The Last of Us. According to Nielsen, the most minutes last year, more than 57 billion were spent watching Suits, a legal drama that premiered 12 years ago. The show, which is available to stream on Netflix and Peacock, stars the former actress Meghan Markle, now the Duchess of Sussex, and likely has her to thank for its second life. But Suits isn't the exception. Old shows, which debuted over a decade ago, dominated the top streamed list of 2023. Several of the programs, including Suits, Gilmore Girls, and Friends, have been off the air for years. According to Nielsen, the most streamed acquired shows of 2023 were Suits, Bluey, NCIS, Grey's Anatomy, Coco Melon, The Big Bang Theory, Gilmore Girls, Friends, Heartland, and Supernatural. In a year where major strikes by Hollywood actors and writers halted the production of a lot of new content, viewers have been inspired to revisit old favorites while waiting for new shows to come back. <laughs> that ain't why! <laughs> because most of the new stuff is big old pieces of trash. Many of these shows also have a persistent nostalgia factor. See, I told you guys that if these companies don't turn around, I'm telling you, isn't there um, a YouTuber named something like Nostalgia something? Same, his name is Nostalgia something. Like, I'm going to just start going back to movies that I haven't seen, haven't had a chance to see in the past. I'm going to review them, right? Also, we're going to revisit the old greats. Review, maybe live stream, talk, chat, talk about the old greats. Because there's no way, there's no way I could stand to continue. At some point, you know, they tell you in success that there's a point where if you just, you're just so sad and you're depressed and you just can't find the right thing in life. And is it just a point where you can't go any lower? You just can't go. Your emotions can't go any lower. And you say no to yourself. And you about face. You go the opposite direction. And you say, I am going to fix this. Okay? And that's what's going to happen. I, I already told you. I have a morbid fascination with how bad television movies and the stories of video games and you know everything are right now. But once my fascination runs out, it's going to be... All stuff that totally only makes me happy. Not what I'm saying? I have a sliver of hope that things will return to their former greatness. We shall see. Many of these shows have had persistent nostalgia factor. Fans of Friends have long found comfort in the show's familiar jokes and the studio audience's loud laughs, even before streaming when the show was in reruns. Those same fans have sought this comfort even more last year in the wake of Matthew Perry's death. Uh, let me see here. Snacks you, <laughs> Snacks you loved in the 90s but can't get any more? Oh, that's another one to click. Okay, I was like, what? Watching something comforting can take away the stress involved in the infinite choices at our display. No, it's taken away the stress involved with all the shows that they're destroying these days. So you go back home, you go back to the 90s X-Men, you go back to Transformers, to Thundercats, you go back to Friends, 
You go back to the A-Team. You go back to all the old shows that made you feel great because the new shows want to bring all the politics and woke politics of today shoved into them so you can no longer escape. You can no longer use these TV programs and television shows and video games and movies for escapism because real life is all in here now. So you got to deal with all the same crap. And people are tired of it. Time to go back to fantasy land, turn my brain off, and just rest. That's the problem. Old shows also have another advantage over the new content when it comes to streaming minutes. Their libraries are so much larger. There's only one season so far of the huge HBO hit The Last of Us, but there are 21 seasons of NCIS and 19 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. There are just more minutes to binge watch. Then there's the ultra young audience who doesn't care if they've seen this episode of Coco Melon five or 500 times. Repeat watches rack up streaming minutes for the program either way. Nielsen also ranked the top 10 original streaming shows, but none of them reached the same volume of time watched as the acquired programs did. <clears throat> Excuse me, the top 10 original streamed programs, Ted, Ted Lasso, The Night Agent, Guinea in Georgia, Virgin River, Love is Blind. I'm about to watch a new episode of that right now. Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, Gabby's Dollhouse, The Mandalorian, Al uh, Outer Banks, and The Lincoln Lawyer. Dollhouse. Was that a show that used to come on? I don't think it was called Gabby's Dollhouse. Wasn't there something like that where, like, she would, the chick would be programmed to be whoever the guy kind of, like, paid for her to be? That was a crazy show. I remember that. The most streamed movies, meanwhile, were Moana and Encanto, both animated features on Disney+. Plus. They were released in 2016 and 2021, respectively. Get it together. Get it together, Hollywood, Disney, and everybody else. I am a fan that is telling you over and over again, because I want my voice heard. I want you to hear me. I know you guys watch this. I know. Big, big names watches and names so big that you don't even know their names watches. I know you do. Come on. Let's get back to the good entertainment. Let's get back to us being happy and loving entertainment and y'all making money. Hey, that sounds like a good idea, don't it? 10 million subscribers. Woo!